Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to follow up on the Roku story, which just gets more and more interesting. For those of you who haven't been following along with my channel, Roku decided several weeks ago that they were going to disable your television unless you decided that you were going to agree to a forced arbitration agreement. And this is one of the problems of things that connect to the internet. Anything that must connect to the internet to work has the ability to stop working if the manufacturer wants to make it stop working, and they can also change the terms of the sale. If you take a look over here, you may notice there's an important update. They changed the dispute resolution terms to forced arbitration, and you have no disagree button. Though there's no disagree button, and you can't change the source. You can't watch Netflix. You can't watch Max. You can't change over to HDMI because you, it's not going to work until you hit agree. And the reason that I've used the R word so many times when I talk about the mentality these companies have is you may notice there is no option to say no. Now, you may wonder, why would a company take such an anti-consumer move that's going to piss so many people off and literally disable their televisions until they pay them? Because again, they can change the terms of the sale by just reaching into your television, but if you want to opt out of those terms of that sale, well, you, you have to send them paper mail. Uh, it was because there was a data breach. Over 15,000 Roku accounts were hacked, and it gets better. It gets better. It gets better. So over here, you'll see 576,000 streaming accounts have been compromised in a security breach. Now, they're claiming that there's no account accountability on their part because this data breach must have happened somewhere else. This is not inside of our systems in any way, shape, or form. These passwords were stolen from other idiots that used this, you know, up to password 1234 on too many websites. And, um, yeah, I, I, I believe you. I, I, it's, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I believe you. That, that, that's why you decided to disable people's televisions, because it wasn't your fault. Uh, the same company that decided they want to create a patent to inject advertisements via HDMI into content that you already paid for. Uh, so I just kind of want to go over how ridiculous this is because a lot of people have like said in the comments, this is not a big deal. Why do you care? You're making a mountain over a molehill. Imagine that, I don't know, just, I, I just, let, let's just do a hypothetical. Let's say that, I don't know, let's say instead of just making angry YouTube videos, hypothetically speaking, let's just say I ran a business for 15 years. Like just, just imagine this for a moment. And imagine that I provided a, a service and I gave a one year warranty on that service. And then I realized that the parts that I were putting into customer products were not as good as I thought. Now, in that event, there are two things I can do. Behind door number one, I can extend their warranty and I could reach out to all of them and say, hey, you may have gotten a bad batch. Let me know if you have time to look something over with me. I want to make sure it's right. Behind door number two, I could somehow figure out a way to uh, disable their device from working. Let's just say that I fixed their MacBook. I could disable their MacBook from ever turning on again until they hit agree to something on the screen that waves me of all liability and changes their warranty from one year to 30 days. If I were to do that, you would come to my store with pitchforks and you would set me on fire. Let's be real. I would never get away with that. Anybody watching this that's a small business owner, if, if you fix somebody's car and you realize that the transmission parts that you installed were not as good as you thought they were, if you had a way of disabling the starter on somebody's car or disabling the spark plug until they hit agree on the screen to a lesser warranty and you not suing them, after you figured out that you fucked up, you're, you're, again, so, so somebody would drive their car through your garage. But for some reason, when these companies do it, you're just supposed to deal with it. It's okay. And it, again, it's not about the Roku account. It's not about whether or not you were able to see my watch history or anything like that. It's the principle. It's the fact that every single company is doing this all at the same time. Why does every single company think that the past two or three months is the perfect time to change the terms of the sale and force people to give up their rights as an American to be able to take you to court if you fuck something up? If you've noticed virtually every company Company over the past two or three months has been pushing this forced arbitration thing. And there is a pattern here that you may have noticed where they opt you into it with an email. They opt you into it by disabling your product from working until you agree. But if you want to opt out, you have to send them paper mail, certified mail, priority mail, because if I put stamps on it, it's not going to arrive or some shit like that. They're making it hard for a reason. They're doing this for a reason. And in my opinion, it's to fuck with you. There is no explanation for why it is on an electronic device where you can have me click OK on a remote to agree. I can't hit agree or opt out in that menu. You not including opt out in that menu and requiring that I send you paper mail, not just paper mail, but certified mail or priority mail or anything else is being done to fuck with you. There's no other explanation for that in my opinion. And any time a company does that, any time they get raising prices, whatever, having less customer service because you're busy or you just want to make more money, 
I understand that. What I have zero tolerance for is when a company comes out with a policy that is not just greedy, but is designed from the ground up to tell me, fuck you, you stupid customer. It's not about the forced arbitration because people will say in the comments, Lewis, when are you going to sue them anyway? Oh, you're going to sue them because somebody saw what you watched in Netflix? That's not the point, you fuck. That is not what this country was founded on. And you need a history lesson, and I'm going to give it to you. When I read in the comments section, oh, it's just forced arbitration, who cares? Oh, you know, you're not going to go to court against them anyway. You're missing the point. The point of the matter is that you have the ability to break or brick my device, change the terms of the sale, remove my rights as an American, and you can do that digitally. But if I want to opt out, I have to send you paper fucking mail that is certified or priority that for most Americans that don't have a label printer and all the shit at their house, requires they wait in line 15 minutes at the post office. And you know that's being done to fuck with you. And that's the point. In the late 18th century, there was something called the Townsend Acts. And the Townsend Acts were acts that uh, had many different taxes on many different things for the British colonies in the United States. And they repealed these acts, but they kept something called the tea tax within those. So you were still being taxed for tea. Then they released the Tea Act and the Declaratory Act. The Declaratory Act was an act that said that British Parliament and King, a essentially can stick their dick down the throats of American colonists whenever they want. Britain retained the tax on tea even after they repealed the Townsend Acts. A couple of years later, around 1773, they released the Tea Act, which tried to cut down and clamp down on smugglers of tea. They wanted, you to allow, they wanted to allow you to essentially sell the tea directly to Americans so that they would not bypass the tax. Ironically, this actually wound up in the tea being cheaper. However, people were so pissed off at the fact that they released the Declaratory Act that said essentially Parliament and the king can stick their dick down your throat. That regardless of the fact that the tea was cheaper, Americans still revolted because they did not want to pay the tax if they weren't going to have representation. And they didn't want to accept the Declaratory Act, that Parliament can stick their dick down your throat at any given time and you have to accept it. If you read history, what you'll understand is that it's not about the money. It's about the principle and the respect. That was the king and parliament's way of shoving their collective dicks as far down the throat of every American as possible. Not for their pleasure, simply to let you know that they could do it. And at the end of the day, it was actually cheaper to buy British tea than it was to make it ourselves or to buy it from anybody else. Why did Americans get so mad at that? Because it's not about the money. It's not about the price. It's about the fact that you're going out of your way to say that we can stick our dick down your throat at any time that we want. And it's about high time as consumers that we say fuck you. In 1776, they had a fucking point. It's about time to do that in 2024. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.